This video is being brought to you by Cutting Edge Gamer. If you upgrade graphics cards often, Cutting Edge Gamer is the perfect option for you. Lease the newest graphics cards on the market such as Nvidia's RTX 20 series for a low monthly payment. Click the affiliate link below in the description to find out more. Let's pour one out for my homie the Ouya. On June 25th, they're cutting off all Ouya services. I, I can't believe they were still running Ouya services. <laughs> Anyway, let's get into it. Skip it up and that up. So it's a sad day for the probably two people that still play their Ouya or Forge TV, which is another Android device that Razer had. Keep in mind, remember Razer purchased um, Ouya a few years ago. So that's why this involves Razer. But Razer is shutting down services for the Ouya and Forge TV on June 25th of this year. So if you purchase games for your Ouya, go download them now, make sure you have them because once June 25th comes around, your account is being deactivated, Ouya service is gone. And if you have any funds uh, on your Ouya account, you better use them and buy a couple games or whatever the case may be because you you can't get those refunded. So sad day for you. Again, I'm sure there's probably three people that are sad about this at most. But I still wanted to talk about this because the Ouya is an interesting piece of history for me because when the Ouya was first announced and they had the Kickstarter, which did incredibly well, did close to $8.6 million and they were only asking for what were they have it right here actually. They only wanted to get $950,000 goal. They almost raised $9 million, or close to $8.6 million, like I said. So there was a lot of people that were excited for the Ouya, and I was one of them. I remember making a video back in 2012 where I was like, oh, the Ouya is going to be the best system ever for indie developers. Oh, God, it's going to be great. And I was all over it, and I overhyped the Tegra 3 processor, which was an anemic turd, but I was saying, oh, it's close to current gen consoles like the 360 and PS3. Oh, Rich from 2012, what were you thinking? No, it wasn't. <laughs> the Tegra 3 was a horrible, horrible chipset made by NVIDIA. They're, they're, they're new, like Tegra chipsets now, like the X1 that's in the Switch, so on and so forth, are way better. They're great chipsets, but back then the Tegra 3 chip was, yeah, no, it wasn't doing 360 or PS3 caliper visuals, like nowhere near it. So I don't know what the hell I was talking about. But what made me excited for the Ouya back then was it was a much different time in gaming back in 2012, okay? If you were an indie developer, there was kind of like this big fort around the consoles and to get indie games onto consoles back then, it happened, but it wasn't, they weren't as, Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft were not as open and willing to work with indie developers as they are now. That, that's just a fact. It's it, you just it's a given. Okay, where indie developers now are embraced and they're encouraged to bring their games to consoles. It wasn't the same back then. They, we did have indie games, but it was a much different time. So here you have this box. You have Julie Ehrman coming out, who was the CEO back then of uh, Ouya and saying, hey, anyone who's an indie developer, here's a console for you. It's just powerful enough. You could, you don't, you could just bring it to the console. You could figure how you want people to pay, whether it be microtransactions or whatever, you make it free to play. And if they want to pay for it, they can. It, we're giving you that opportunity that the other big dogs aren't giving you. And back then that sounded like a brilliant idea. And a lot of other people thought it was a brilliant idea too. That's why it made almost $8.6 million in Kickstarter when they weren't even asking for a million bucks. But then the reality of Uya set in, and it was funny, even around that time too, is that that's when you had Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo starting to embrace indie developers. So by the time after delays and stuff, when the Ouya hit the scene in 2013, and I actually went to, no, did I get mine delivered? Yes, I purchased mine and got it delivered to me. I got the Ouya, which was an interesting time to get the Ouya because that's just when I started doing YouTube full time. Man, it was a, it was such a bad system. Well, first off, before I even go into my experiences with it, it was so funny. They had Julie Ehrman. Uh, she was on, um, she was being interviewed and they asked her, what is the killer app for the Ouya? Now, 
Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, you know they would come out with, they would say, Nintendo would say Mario or Zelda, or Sony would say The Last of Us or, or Uncharted, and Microsoft would say Halo or Forza. Boom, right away. They had, they had her being interviewed. I'll show a little clip of it here. Is there a game that you feel like is going to be the game yet? that brings this to when people see it, they're like, oh, I have to, I'm gonna spend the 99 bucks because I have to play this game. Um, Stalag Fight. And she was like, what was that game again? What was that game that was really like lots of fun? Was it Stalag Mites, Stalag Fights? Um, like she didn't know a killer app for the console that she was the CEO of the company. And it was like, oh boy, oh boy. And then I got my console. Now, one of the things, if you remember seeing the Kickstarter video, they really, really hyped up the controller. The most important part of this to us is the controller. We really focus a lot on what gamers are looking for. Precise controls, tactility, right sizing. And they were making, oh, but we just sat there and carved this controller and just made it perfect and just, oh, God, it feels so good in your hands. And, oh, and you, I would, I'm, I'm thinking, like, watch the, well, I'll have a clip probably in here, but you saw, you would you would have thought that man they really put a lot of effort into into that controller you got the controller oh my god it was the worst controller i have ever every one of the worst controllers i've ever used okay it, the, the the triggers got stuck on it they, they made squeaking noises the d-pad was mushy if i remember the fire buttons didn't feel or, or the the face buttons didn't feel, it felt like a cheap third-party controller and this is the controller that came with the system. This is the first party controller that came with the Ouya and it felt like a cheap knockoff control that you'd want to throw in the garbage. And then on top of it, the games, ah, oh, I don't even remember. There, there wasn't really anything good on the Ouya. I always remember there was some game, I was trying to find something I would truly enjoy. Um, and the one game I tried, oh God, there was this game where there was a frog, you were just there was no real purpose to the game it was almost looked like a tech demo for if it from like 1994 and i just remember the frog would just fly around farting there was a, a farting frog that was the kind of games you got in the oh yeah it was just a complete flop it was dead on arrival i mean sure they had some games that were popular on mobile devices that they brought over to the ouya like like they brought over a cannibal it was like that running and jumping game like shadow gun they had a uh, dead trigger and things like that that you could play on the ouya but there were those are games you could play on your phone and you could play them with the controller or you could buy a tablet even though android tablets are slowly dying right now and you could just hook up a Bluetooth controller and, and then you have a tablet and a gaming device. That you, a lot of times because they had HDMI out or micro HDMI out and you could play your tablet on your television with a controller and it would probably have a more powerful processor in it than the Ouya did. It was a failure all around and it was a product that fit a need that was no, no, no longer necessary because the big companies like Sony, Microsoft and Nintendo started to embrace the indie gaming community and indie developers and there was just no need for the Ouya anymore. Why go to the Ouya with this tiny install base on this really crappy product when you could sell your game on the 360 or the PS3 at the time or PC or hell even the Wii U. You could sell it on the Wii U and it'd probably have a bigger audience than the Ouya. But to Razer's credit, they purchased Ouya back in 2015 and they supported the thing for about four years. And if you think about it, the Ouya has been on the market since 2013 and it's been supported somehow, some way since 2013, the summer of 2013, summer-ish 2013. That's almost six years. It's about six years for a console that was dead on arrival and was considered a failure from the get-go and probably has no one playing it right now except people that are fatalists who want to see how disastrous it is, that's a lot of support to give a console that was making no one money. So I got to give Razer credit where the credit's due. And the Ouya is an interesting piece of history that will be looked back on as a major mistake, but an interesting one. It was also one of the first crowdfunded products that people realized that crowdfunding maybe isn't always a good idea. And people started to slowly become wary of crowdfunding after the Ouya became a commercial flop.
Because think about it, back then crowdfunding seemed like this magical thing that can make products come to life that may never come to fruition. And after the Ouyo became a resounding flop, after it, after it received close to $8.6 million of crowdfunding, people became very wary of the crowdfunding idea. I'm not saying that there wasn't a billion other things after the Ouya that were successfully crowdfunded that didn't flop as well because there was a bunch of things that got crowdfunded that also flopped and people like ran away with the money, so on and so forth. But I always, th I, I think the Ouya, after it was considered to be such a turd was the first thing where people were like, hmm, I should think twice about supporting a crowdfunded product because look what happened with the Ouya. I think the Ouya started that trend. But hey, on paper, the Ouya seemed like a nice idea. I was on board initially and thought it seemed like a nice idea. But when it came to market, it came to market too late. It was a necessary product. And it was a gaming console that just simply didn't have a market. It missed the boat. And on top of it, the controller sucked. This is Rich of Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one. Um, Stalag fight. <laughs>